Good afternoon. You are watching the Laddie Esports League League of, League of Legends Summer Tournament. My name is Ken, and I am joined at the casting table by three of my good friends here, my League of Legends experts. We have Art Pulse, Mr. Kreshel, hey, how's it going? And Adminex Traitor, the man himself. Update. So, guys, uh, tonight we'll start the first night of our League of Legends Summer League games every saturday at 9 p.m uh with the with the replay of the matches um playing on noon on sunday on the twitch channel and this is our first match it's between acog which is a simon sanchez team versus nd phase rush representing notre dame all nine teams in the league have alumni or current um students from uh, school on guam so it's kind of a little interesting format and it is round robin for nine weeks so that should be interesting right now we're looking at the the tournament or the custom lobby and getting ready to start the draft pick stage you guys are you guys do you know anything about any of these players right now i have never heard of uh, any of them <laughs> i have not heard of any of them but just by looking at their ranks i'm kind of uh, i'm not even <laughs> sure about the first team because they're they haven't played ranked at all so they're kind of we're kind of going in blind here but here we go with the uh, with the banning phase of the tournament draft. So I believe we have ACOG banning first. Is that right? Am I right? Yep, correct. ACOG is on the left, or they're blue, and um, Andy Phase Rush is in red. And we got the first ban with Blitzcrank. I'm guessing people don't want to get hooked. I think they might want to go for the Soraka pick. That's what I would think, just because she's pretty broken in this patch right now. But who knows? We'll see. I don't know. Uh, personally, I believe that Blitzcrank is not a great ban. I mean, for solo queue, it's understandable, but in team play, unless you're going for some kind of pick comp, I don't think that's a great ban, unless they have Blitzcrank on the first side. Uh, Bubba and DK's phase rush. Shaco ban, another very solo queue oriented pick. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm not sure if they just really did their research on the enemy team, or if they're just really afraid of these solo queue picks. And they're not quite as experienced in team play. But we'll see it may be that of, case. We'll see how the rest of the draft plays out. Yeah, on the other team though, however, uh, with ND Phase Rush picking a lot of champs that have a lot of CC and a lot of uh, AOE damage. So I would like to. I would like to think that they're actually really trying to go for those hard engage picks or just those heavy damage AOE picks. So we'll see what their final ban is. Um, like you said, I believe it's a lot of solo queue picks um, on ACOG's team that they ban. So uh, we'll see what their final ban is actually going to go into. So I guys, see that. help me out here. Like, um, I, when it comes to the picking oh, phases, yeah. when it comes to these picking phases, who do you want to have your first pick and who do you want to have the last pick? Like, what roles? Uh, is it based on roles or is it based on like you know the strength of the player in? a certain role generally your first couple of picks will revolve around bot lane and jungle because that's what you you want to keep your solo laners in favorable matchups whenever mm. you could so most of the time adc picks first it's the most inconsequential or a really important pick uh for instance this season like if something op is open you're gonna want to pick it but yes yeah, that's a good choice He's been nerfed a couple of times, but he's still a very dependable top laner. Uh, we see the Yumi ban from, uh, I believe that is Phase Rush's side. Yumi yep. is uh, terrifying, even though she's a tiny cat. Very annoying to deal with, so they just eliminated that at the get-go. They got rid of two really good team fighters, And uh, on the ND, or sorry, ACOG side, they banned a whole bunch of solo queue things. But Olaf has seen tournament play, and a good Olaf is quite terrifying. So they looks like um, Andy Phase Rush picked their top laner right away. It's a lot of confidence because top lane is a matchup oriented, heavily matchup oriented, heavily matchup. Yeah, so it's very confident of him to just pick it out right and uh, card this to pair with it. They're both flex picks. They can go mid. And, uh, set can of course go top and jungle. Karthus can go jungle or mid. So we'll see how this plays out from here. Caitlyn pick, uh, very safe. Not in the best spot right now, but. She's a very vanilla cookie cutter ADC. Safe lane phase and Anivia or control mage mid. A lot of clearing. You're right about the Soraka band though. Yep, the there it Dark is. Mm -hmm. 
That's the only reason why I would actually assume that they would actually ban a Blitzcrank. So, um, just looking at the team, like you said, I was actually going to highlight that as well. Set can be played in either actually in the top lane, in the jungle, or actually as a support role. So um, right now, Andy Phase Rush is highly flexing all of their picks right now. Um, even the Vagar pick can either be uh, played as support or it can be played in the mid lane. Um, on the very rare occasion, some people would actually go for APC as well. Uh, actually sacrificing an ADC and, and um, changing it to an AD, uh, APC. So um, definitely a lot of flex picks right here. Um, I like the Mord ban because Mord is definitely one of, uh, I would like to say, one of the uh, strong picks in League right now. So um, well, well, let's go see what ACOG is trying to think of banning at this point. Um, for some reason, uh, since they're going with a lot of solo picks, uh, solo queue picks, I'm just going to assume that they're going to go for a Yasuo pick for their last pick. I then get to say uh, Vayne. I'm surprised they banned Vayne, actually, just because they already have a Caitlyn who kind of hard counters Vayne. So uh, let's see what else they, they have in store for us. Vayne kind of only gets countered, quote unquote, by Caitlyn in the early game. But a good Vayne player can just run you down at six. That's right, that's right. So it's not too much of a threat, but I think what they're doing now is they're trying to eliminate or at least limit the ADC player, and then they ban Yorick. <laughs> <laughs> Do they know something I don't? I mean, Yorick support is a thing right now with uh, the Fasting Senna, so maybe that's what they're trying to stop, but I would have just banned Senna in that case. But this could be like uh, one of those things where we got five guys who maybe play together uh, very rarely, but, you know, maybe they duo queue and mostly solo queue players so banning could be uh i don't know random could be probably random on the acog side I, i'd like to see um some more picks these these are very very solo queue picks um and in regards to team fighting um i i really i i don't see much of it happening um i would like to say that acog can actually do more of a more of some going off of picks that's what Pretty much what I would like to think is their win condition. And also to just go and split the map. So uh, with the final pick being Alistar, um, I, I believe that will be probably securing this. Unless they're going to change it last minute. Okay. Oh. So the teams are set. Uh... What do you guys think of the team? <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what uh, ACOG is trying to do. I guess it's semi protect Caitlyn, and maybe Singe will be running denial and uh, cutting minion waves halfway versus the enemy team, but I'm not quite sure. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty very much. It's a setup for sure. It is, it so, is. Vi makes sense to go in for Vagar or Lucian if he missteps, but. Alistair is very good for peeling and protecting his ADC. He's also very good for engaging. They have a lot of good engage tools on uh, the ND Phaedra side, so we'll just see how this goes. That's true. Even if Vi gets in, though, I'm worried. It feels like she really has no one else to run in with her. Right. Yeah, there's no like... one gonna be, that's going to be closing the gap there, other than maybe Singe. <laughs> right. Like, assuming Vi gets into Vagar, then what? She just gets blown up. There's no one really supporting her there. As we wait for this game to start, um, I want to show you guys this image that the ND Phase Rush team uh, sent to me of their players. You can see their starting five and I guess their sub slash hype team. Um, yeah, check that. I mean, it's a it's a very good graphic. I like to say that uh, you know that they put some work into this, I, and I like how they actually used a lot of the pictures that represents the school that they are actually coming from. So, um, in this in this uh in this specific match, I like to say that since they put a lot of dedication into it, I'm pretty sure that Andy Phase Rush is trying to really win this tournament. So we'll see. Um, how ACOG will stand up to ND Phase Rush with their, um, I won't say questionable picks, but uh, very solo queue-esque picks. <laughs> Interesting for sure. They have a lot of wave play with Anivia and Caitlyn. Like, she could queue and uh, 
And if you can R the wave. And Cinch hopefully can perhaps split push, which is a more solo queue oriented strategy, but you can run a little bit of disruption, but not against Vagar, Set, and Alistar. That's the problem. They got a very good team comp uh, coming out here for MB Phase Rush. Set can peel with his ultimate and his uh, headcracker, the E, to pull the two, two enemies in. Right. Stunning them. Karthus has a lot of uh, AoE damage and, of course, his ultimate. Even post-mortem, he'll be useful. Vagar will most likely be running Glacial Augment here, which is a lot of team utility. And, of course, Vagar's cage, the Event Horizon, is going to be shutting down really any any kind of Russian. But they don't have a Russian comp, so maybe they'll try to out-sustain it with Soraka. <laughs> perhaps um I, that's all i can see happening i i feel like uh if acog would want to actually win this it would be pretty much uh really just trying to split the map and getting as much picks as they possibly can and it will be difficult as you have mentioned just because um nd phase rush does have a lot of uh crowd control and they have a lot of appeal for their carries um, they actually, even just the three carries with having Karthus, Vagar, and Lucian, and even Seth can carry as well, as long as he gets fed. So we'll, we'll see what happens in this match, which is starting in the next two seconds. Seconds, actually. All right, let's see how they play. Okay, I don't know if you guys are all on the the ready up screen, but we have Glacial Augment Soraka. I have wow. personally not seen Glacial Augment Soraka ever, and Electrocute Vi. So, oh yeah. Ele Electrocute Vi, if you're going like full shotgun build where it's all AD, it could be viable. Not viable, right. but. Not sure if that's what the team needs right now. Soraka, I could see her building uh, spooky ghosts to slow down the enemy team, but it's not exactly optimal to bring into a tournament, I'd say. But good luck to that yeah. Soraka. Maybe she, maybe the Soraka knows something I don't. <laughs> right. And also, uh, the one thing that I wanted to actually uh, bring my shift of focus to is that Cinch is actually running Arcane Comet, which is very oh. interesting to me, just because I'm, I feel like I'm much more familiar with seeing, um, I think, not necessarily, well, Aerie's not probably a, a keystone to Cinch, but um, uh, I just see goes, uh, others. You know? He goes Conquer nowadays. He does, okay. Cinch goes Conquer, yeah. There you go, there you go. Because his poison picks count as uh, in combat. Which helps him mm -hmm. keep his stacks up a lot longer. Arcane Comet, you hardly see because when Cinch flings somebody, he throws them behind him, rendering the Comet pretty useless. Right. Uh, Phase Rush is even a better option over Comet, just so you can get a little bit of speed maybe going. But I don't know about Arcane Comet Singe. Perhaps, uh. They got some secret tech that I'm not aware of. Right. All right, so we are at here and entering the rift. So uh, let's see how these te both teams are actually going to show up and they're going to actually um, uh, try to prevent some invades or if they're going to go for some invades. The way how I'm looking at this, it looks like ND Phase Rush is actually looking um, uh, looking like they're going to be grouping. They're, they're going to be in, uh, trying to invade from the... Uh, southern part of the jungle really interesting setup here it's Singe is at his tower which oh is... there, and there we go yeah. and that's a pick the first blood going to <laughs> Ooh. it's gonna be going to set the top laner top laners get a lot of value off their items so that's pretty dangerous the warding they're warding 
very early on the blue team. Yes, um, that, that, I don't know, um, I don't know what kind of decision that would be. They, they basically wasted their warding trinkets for the first three minutes, where you are more likely to uh, be exposed to a, a potential gang. So, uh, ACOG kind of putting themselves a little bit more, um, at a disadvantage in the early game, but, uh, we'll see how, uh, ND Phase Rush is going to react to that. I mean, there's some good to come out of it. Alistar did burn his flash for that, so the level 2 armor is a little bit less threatening, but Alistar, very strong level 2 with Lucy, and they're gonna have to look out for that. They're gonna be reaching lane first, getting priority here. Uh, the early wards, I'm not totally against. It prevents invades, but against Karthus, you don't need to worry about that. Karthus actually dropped his leash off the blue buff. That's gonna hurt him a lot. He tried to do a double pull. Ooh. I have no idea what he's doing. Hex flash going off from Alistar in the bot lane. Not gonna find anything. Soraka a little bit late to the lane here. Okay, she's she's lost out on a bit of experience. Uh Caitlyn also picked up the red buff off the jungler. This is an absolute fiesta of the game already. Uh yeah, Vi is gonna be backing with level one, her smite down, and her W start. So she's really hurting. She's gonna need to go to the blue buff as soon as possible. Karthus also kinda Got screwed on his uh, jungling, but he seems to be doing pretty okay. He picked up his blue buff. He's gonna finish wolves. Probably gonna have to look the back here. Oh, and we got a little bit of a, a fight in the top lane. Uh, flash from Singe, just because he was in a sticky situation. Karthus? Karthus was actually able to clear his Raptor camp with 25% uh, health and 10% mana. Alright, so because good. I know that uh, in the uh, latest patch that they've uh, they've actually uh, put some lifesteal uh, in the uh, uh, starting jungling items. So, on that low percentage, they're actually able to sustain much more in their jungler. Uh, in their jungle, sorry. So, it's a... Uh... Oh, and we get a kill off of the top lane. Wow, we did... That one. Yeah, Flash was blown. There's a huge wave. Singe's in a really bad position there. Hex Flash from Alistar in the oh. bot lane. Fulvra is going to be finding Caitlyn. Excellent trample. Good positioning by the Alistar there. Going to be picking up another free kill on Caitlyn. And What's also this? he gets the red buff. So that means that he's going to be able to s sustain and actually do a, a lot more poking um, in the bot lane. So Caitlyn has to be a little bit more careful with where she's positioning herself. Alistair is going to Complete control over the bot lane right now. Let's see how Midland's doing. Let's see, actually look at the jungle right now. Uh, Vi is trying to clear her camps, but Karth is actually taking her blue buff, but spots her. Oh no. Just trying to go and help um, help out Vi at this time. One level down. But it looks like uh, Karth is not going to care, and he's probably going to get a sm uh, His smite he's should be coming kill. up soon. <laughs> Oh man, this is And that boring. is a free blue buff. Wow. Oh, and he does find the Vi. The Vi being lazy oh. in the video game. Don't back there. <laughs> gonna be pushed out. But Singe gets a free oh. lane here for a little bit. He's gonna be warding topside crush. And Karthus is, is really he... going out there. <laughs> it's looking like ND Phase Rush is very, uh, uh, playing a very aggressive type of, uh, game to ACOG at this point, so hopefully they can pick something up from this. But we also have a fight uh, going down in the top lane. Oh, actually, just Singe getting chunked up a lot. Yeah, just uh, standard trading. It's, it's kind of hard to fight Set as a melee character. He has a ridiculous amount of regeneration. And Singe isn't even in experience range right now. And I think I'm not a top lane main personally, but he needs to stay within experience range at the minimum to even be a factor in this lane. You can see he's one level down from the set. Bot lane going Ooh. in again. Soraka a little bit overextended, gonna be knocked up. Flash is being blown at bot. So that'll be Soraka going down. Lucian has, what, two kills now. Did come back with a BS sword over Caitlyn. Uh, Caitlyn wasn't able to buy, actually. Her uh, first death. So she's in a lot of trouble here. 
up and I, I, I'm seeing them engage on Caitlyn once again, actually having no sums. Ooh. Standard combo, they need to play a, a lot safer at bot. They're not respecting the Alistair at all with the Hex Flash and they're really paying for it. With no sums up, Caitlyn should be abusing her range at least farm under tower. Ooh, Singe going back on a huge wave. That's gonna set him even further back than before. Ooh. And also, there's a little bit of a skirmish in the bottom jungle. Alistar flashing, but actually igniting the Vi. Is she going to live? Actually, own. Oh. That sets their jungler. Uh, that sets up uh, ACOG's jungle way behind. Actually, everybody's technically way behind, except for, I believe, the mid lane, where it's basically even. And there's a card assault. I'll be taking out some Oof, indeed. Yeah, let's see how we're doing CS wise. <laughs> oh my, Caitlyn just walked up. There's oh. just not enough respect in the bot lane, man. And, and also, by as well. it was a he very close. <laughs> <laughs> it was a very close, uh, it was a potential kill for Vi, however. Uh, unfortunately, he still had his uh, flash up so that he could actually get away from his uh, from her final hit, and it looks like it looks to me this is very very much um, in uh, Andy Phase Rush's favor. I don't think anyone would argue with you there. As we see Andy Phase Rush's bot lane backing with a four and lead at the bot lane. This Karthus is amazing. He started with a completely screwed leash. And he managed to walk around the entire enemy jungle for half an hour and just harass this Vi. Counter jungling Karthus. That is just illegal. So Alan, let me ask you, um, just just so that we can uh, get a little bit of an idea, what do you think that ACOG can do in this situation to kind of bounce back from this? Quite frankly, they need to just respect the power level, the power difference right now. And if this was solo queue, I'd surrender for sure. This this is oh. <laughs> I see it as I see it as over. But yeah, ah oh, man, <laughs> maybe in the very very late game they might be able to make a difference here. But Alistair, Alistair is solo invading the vibe. <laughs> Right, and Lucian yeah, is 2v1-ing bot lane, yeah. actually diving underneath diving the turret under and surviving. <laughs> oh my. This is just an absolute beatdown. Alistair looking for a hex flash here through the wall, gonna land his headbutt into the pulver. No, 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 flash it. Yep, pulverize goes down, trample, proccing the stun. He's tanking a couple turret shots, but he's gonna be fine. And Nivea was completely on, so she wasn't able to do anything. Alright, and the first turret goes to uh, Andy Phase Rush in the bot lane. <laughs> Unsurprisingly, Lucian's early mid game is really strong and Oh no, bye. Don't Oh no, bye. He's already got an essence reaver. Oh, is, is she Caitlyn, Oh, you can and she No, you have the range. No. Yeah, oh. just a kiting area there. It's hard to all see. All I can say is that all around this map there's deaths everywhere. This is quite difficult to watch. It is uh, a little bit of a mismatch, I'd say. The MD phase rush is just single-handedly, all, all individual skill-wise in every lane is dominating. Alistair is legitimately solo on top lane for experience right now. Looks like they changed their uh, support to top lane. <laughs> yeah. Well, it makes sense for the support, uh, the ADC and the support to go to top after uh, bot lane's taken. So I understand the rotation, but. But they have and to Alistar so just power. invading yeah, the jungle as well. Oof. Basically 1v1 the jungler. Karthus 1v2ing bot lane. Might go down. No, got a good juke. But I Are we going to get a kill? Oh, and we, we get, get the, the first refrag. kill. Alright. So that's a pretty good shutdown gold right there. I believe they're going to receive uh, 500 gold for that. Plus 300 for the kills. So that's 800 gold. Uh... Yeah, ND gonna be taking another kill at top lane with Lucian. Uh, he 
You got seven kills already. Yeah, it's a scary, scary loose one. Very frightening to be up against. Uh, everybody on ACOG is actually down um, either one or even more levels. That's wasted teleport at the top lane. That tower's going down. No! The teleport oh, and it gets up. through. Cinch, Are cinch they actually going to be get getting a kill from this? Cinch might be able to pick up that kill. But oh, kind of and no. nothing. Oh. That is just heartbreaking. Vi is very heartbreaking. Her, her legs have been oh. And then also the flash from Caitlyn, trying to fi get the kill from Set, but not getting it. Very unfortunate. <laughs> Man, there is so much action going on the map. I'm like just like clicking like and all the pings like. <laughs> and another kill down from Vagar. Wow. Andy Phase Rush uh, looks like they're gonna go take the Rift Herald now, and they are sporting double the net worth of their opponents right now. So. All I can say is, uh, hopefully they just get the Rift Herald and, um, you know, run it down mid. <laughs> uh, I'm not. All I can say is they have not respected their opponents at all you know, for uh, ACOG, so... Um, I don't know if they're going to be able to bounce back from this. A lot, of a lot of the jungle camps have been taken away by all of the laners from the opposite team. So, uh, I don't know how uh, ACOG is going to get out of this one. We'll see. Level 5 Vi is not going to do anything against that. Yep, instant melted. Oh, and There's he Alex just got the next flash. <laughs> we got a lot of wombo <laughs> combos everywhere coming in from uh, Team <laughs> Andy Phase Rush. All I can respect is the creativity of doing that. They got a double Rift Herald, maybe even a triple Rift Herald here in this lane. Takes away a lot of control. Big with the event horizon. Doesn't even need to land it, just immediately murders. Yeah, this this game was truly lambs to the slaughter. I have no other way to explain it. This was a uh... oh my, a extremely Indeed. unfortunate game. Are we actually going to get a 15-minute game? Is my question. And Otherwise, the other team can just say F F F 15. Yeah, the Karthus got executed. Oh, and Karthus he, is just trolling, just trolling at this point. He's just having it. He's having fun at this point. No, Caitlyn not I, um, respecting his passive though. Yeah, Andy Faze has a little BM here, they're not even gonna end it. They're gonna let this game ride for a bit. Do we have dragon timers on this? Well, I'm going to assume that because of, uh, uh, because of the cooldown clock, we have like a less than 15 seconds until Infernal Dragon is actually gonna pop up. But it looks like uh, the bot lane is just slaughtering the entire um, ACOG team. Ooh, and getting out with a triple kill with uh, Lucian over there. 15 kill Lucian. Uh... Okay, flash coming out from the a double override by Alistair. Red also getting the Karthus all. Oh! Everybody, Alistair gets out. Wow. Wow. <laughs> With the stopwatch. Yes. And, and just the walking just through move. the back scratchers. Oh, and the fling into the fountain. They were able to take out one person. That matters, man. That's a good one. It's something. That... By finally getting her ultimate hitting level 6, we'll be just ulti by Vagar. Just... So he didn't make a haymaker here. Oh, no, he doesn't even need to use his haymaker. And just... Oh, and he just dies and in the tower. Lived. Oh, but he actually goes under turret just, to, just for the BM or just for fun. I, I'm pretty sure this is Vienna at this point. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is just... Oh, and it's actually an Ocean Drake. My my apologies. I weren't able to see that earlier. Oh, wow. so I'm guess I'm a, I'm going to assume that either one um, Indy Phase Rush is just gonna have a fun time in the the bottom jungle. And eventually take uh, capture dragon or just run it down mid. They have multiple choices. Uh, they pretty much have this game in their hands. They're not bother taking the dragon at this point. They can do whatever they want. Yep. I think Lucy is just gonna go for the 1v5 here. If he finds it. ACOG here grouping in the mid lane, trying to get rid of the supers. 
But Vagar is actually trying to push uh, push in uh, the bot lane to get the bot lane turret. Ooh. Are we gonna actually have a two v uh, a two v? Uh, actually, yeah, for now. And there's there's two. Oh, and there it is. Vi trying to go in the flank. Oh, Caitlyn with the off key. Oh, but she gets a kill. <laughs> and then a quadra kill with a shutdown gold of 700. And yet, refusing to end the game, which is uh, very Andy just wants to take all the turrets. They just want to take all the turrets. Rocket just walking this, uh, in there, using the exhaust. Play. Oh, it is so they have them fun. cornered at the mountain. All the wards coming out from their support as they slowly. Uh, <laughs> ooh, and we get a fling from Singe actually into the fountain. I think that's his uh, his best pick that he can technically do at this point. Oh, and Caitlyn with the flash in to get the shutdown on Vigar. What are they gonna do? Acog is actually going in and engaging at this point because they actually feel like they're they got this in the bag. They want to get some kills in, get the shutdown, but their Nexus is going to be living for a little bit longer. However, I'm not sure if actually at this point they're actually um it doesn't even seem like they're trying to stop the super minions. Oh, I, but then there's I a kill from. They're just dancing in base. Up and there it is. That is the signal that ACOG is done with this game. It, it's and this game has just finished. Pretty much, I feel like it was kind of. In some, in the words of Solo Q, this game was pretty much decided from Solo, um, from Champ Select. We have an 18-minute game, uh, first game of the season that we are. Recording with a landslide win with seven to forty-four. That was in an anti phase rush. Paper. That man, that was pretty wild. There, there was a lot of killing going on. That, that was crazy. That was a crazy that was a very match. High kill game. There was a lot of. Uh, I, I believe there was a very big skill disparity there between the two teams, unfortunately. And um, yeah, yeah, it really shows you power of uh, respecting your opponents, understanding. When you should engage, when you should uh, disengage, and uh, maybe a little bit more practice, and they'll be able to get a better team comp next time from yeah. the ACOG side. And just a lot of outplay too, like individual outplay, um, you know, little one v one fights and skirmishes using the fog of war, or kiting better. It's pretty, it's a pretty glaring dif uh, difference in the games. Um, man, but this was a good first game to see. There's actually three other games that took place. One game is still going on currently, but I think two two more finished. Um, so I, I don't know. This is the first time we've done it. This is the first week we've done the tournament. We have eight more weeks of, or we've done the league. We have eight more weeks of League of Legends action. Um, and we'll see next time. Maybe we'll stream two games. We'll stagger the games. Um, I'm unsure. Any final words, guys? All I can say is I'm looking forward to some more League of Legends action here on Guam, it, represented by the Laddie Esports League. Shout out to the Laddie Esports League. And hopefully we get some more entertaining games in the future. I think so too. I, and guys, if you're new to the channel, you can watch uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate Action every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. Uh, as we help sponsor the GDOE Varsity High School Smash uh, League. And every Saturday, 9 p.m., you'll, you can watch matches of League of Legends, part of the, our summer league going on. So thank you guys for watching. We'll catch you next time.